And that's a good idea to check to see who it belongs to. Oh, no. All right, let's go ahead and start our reading lesson for today. Today we get to start with a video about an author. An author is what? What does an author do for her or his job, Kaylee? They make books. Today we're going to watch a video about an author that you probably know but you may not know that you know. What? How can you know, but not know that you know? know. We're gonna find out. This author, his name is Kevin Pinkies. We're oh. going to watch a video about him. So first I want you to think about what books do you recognize? What books has he written that you know about? Are you ready for this? I grew, I grew up, up loving books. books and I grew up loving to draw and paint. I remember going through a car phase where I just drew cars. I remember drawing cartoon characters, copying them from the newspaper. These are a couple of pieces I did when I was in high school. I was 16. It is sort of fun to think back and wonder if maybe I knew at some level that I would be an illustrator because that's when it, what an illustrator does. This is one of the first drafts of Kitten's First Full Moon. When I begin a book, for me, it starts with the words that I write in longhand with pen on paper and I cross out and I add things and it's sort of a mess, but I'm getting my ideas down on paper and I'll type on my typewriter. I use very, very simple tools. So as long as I can get ribbons for my typewriter, I think I'll keep doing it that way. From the very beginning, I knew that I wanted a black and white book. This was the, the final book before Kitten's, Kitten's first full moon. moon. Black sky, white moon. I thought the kitten could be white. I wanted it to have a really rich velvety look and I wanted it to be square. There's something about the perfection of the shape. I was experimenting, but I didn't know if I wanted white on black. I didn't know if I wanted to use paper that had a gray tone to it. One of the great joys and big differences about doing the art for Kitten's First Full Moon was that I used a brush because I could just lay down a nice thick line. This is the finished art for the jacket of Kitten which was combined with this piece of art so that the moon was behind Kitten and the, the type was in the moon. The first mouse book I did was A Weekend with Wendell. I used animals because I thought I could better tap the humor of the text. Okay. Lily first appears in Chester's Way. She's such a contrast to Chester and Wilson and I like coming back to her. She lends herself to story quite well. Lily's purple plastic purse is a great example of how a writer can see something in his or her life that then ends up in a book. I was waiting for a plane and in my waiting area, there was a man and his daughter who was about six years old. The girl had a purse with her that made music when she opened it up. She was driving her father absolutely crazy with the purse, which I found completely amusing because I was not a parent at the time. But it was one of those moments where a light bulb went off above my head and I had a notebook with me and I began working on what became Lily's purple plastic purse. When I do the finished art for a book like Lily's Big Day, I do the pencil sketches, I do the refined pencil sketches, then I do a black line drawing for every piece of art in the book. After that, I have to figure out what colors to use when I'm painting. These are a couple of sketches where I was trying to figure out the colors of Mr. Slinger's wedding garb, what color Lily's dress would be, and what color Ginger's dress would be. And I wrote yes. With a picture book, I have words, but I also have the images. With a novel, all I have 
or words, but I love creating the scenes using shadow and light and color, all those things that I would do with paint or ink I'm doing with words. The character usually comes to me first, but I think about that character a long time before I put pen to paper. I often will just write about the character. I'll write what color hair they have. I'll try to come up with a name for them. I'll figure out their family situation. And I really like to have a clear vision in my head of that character before, before I begin. When I write a book like Olive's Ocean, I write in spiral notebooks with a pen. I often buy notebooks with pockets and I'll stick maps postcards, images, anything that might have something to do with this particular book. Often on the back covers, I'll write a timeline, what happened on each day. I'm beginning to figure out what, where they're going, what they're doing. I never know where they will end up when I begin. I was in high school, but I really decided picture books were what I loved and what I wanted to create. When I went to New York, I was 19 to look for a publisher. And I brought everything that I had that I thought was good. This was what became my first book, All Alone. I was filled with great hope and excitement. And I marvel at it now because I don't know if I would have the guts to do it. If we expose our kids to books and art, nothing but good can come from it. All that thinking that goes behind it, all the choices I make, all of that secondary to just creating a great book that is entertaining, that a kid will love. We just heard all about a man named Kevin Hinkies, and he is an author. And I forgot, he's also his own illustrator. That means he writes his book and he does the pictures for it, which is so cool that he gets to create these stories that a lot of us enjoy a lot of the time. So let's go ahead and find our seesaw task together. Please click on activities, assign to class folder, red, E-L-A, and it's called review, plot, and theme. Review, plot, and theme. That's what we're going to be studying today. Yes, Ashley. Yep, it does. Okay, go ahead and open up your tab. And please wait on slide number one. Get it open and wait on slide number one. Today we are going to study two texts, two books that were written by this man named Kevin Hinkies. He wrote the book and he illustrated it. He drew the pictures and we saw him even painting in the video, which is so neat. The first book we're going to do today is called Chester's Way. So one of the books that Kevin wrote is Chester's Way. We have seen this story on Storyline. And today, what are we going to do with this book? We're going to review on slide two. We're going to review how to retell the plot. You have seen this chart before spring break. Remember to retell the plot, you can go through and say, somebody wanted, but, so then, look at these questions that are here under each section.
somebody. Who are the characters and where are they? What's the setting of the story? Then wanted. What do the characters need or want? What's going on in this book? But what went wrong? What's the problem? We know that characters often face a problem in the story. So how do the characters solve the problem or how do they respond to the problem? And then how does the story end? How does the author end the story with the characters and the problem? Is it a happy ending or is there still a problem that they weren't able to fix? We're going to do the plot together as we listen to Chester's Way. We're going to use somebody wanted, but so then. That's how we retell the plot. After we retell the plot, we're going to ask ourselves about the theme. Man, it's been a while since we've talked about theme. What is theme? What is theme, Landon? So close. It's like the message. It's like the main idea. It's like the message that what? Oh, I think the author wanted me to learn. The theme is the message or lesson the author wants us to learn. So isn't it so cool that we just learned about the author of these books? We've now seen his face, we've heard his voice. We know a little bit about how he writes books. So today, after we study one of his books, after we retell the plot, we're going to think about Kevin Heasy. What's the theme? What's the message or lesson he probably wanted us to learn from this book? We're going to do this one together. I'm going to push play and listen to Chester's Way. Then we're going to do the plot together and we will write the theme on the dotted lines. Are you ready? Now that we know about Kevin Hinkies, I'm really excited to listen to Chester's Way. I bet we're going to see some really cool characters in this plot. to you by the Screen Actors Guild Foundation. I'm Katie LeClaire. And I'm Vanessa Morano. Today I'm using American Sign Language for the deaf and hard of hearing viewers. And we will be reading Chester's Way, written and illustrated by Kevin Hinkus. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. He always cut his sandwiches diagonally. He always got out of bed on the same side. And he never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast. Toast with jam and peanut butter. And he always carried a miniature first aid kit in his back pocket. Just in case. You definitely have a mind of your own, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it, said Chester's father. Chester's best friend Wilson was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played. And they never swung at the first pitch or slid head first. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to. And they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too. But they rarely ate between meals. 
some days I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson. Wilson and Chester. That's, That's the, the way, way it was. was. They loved to go on picnics. Once, when Wilson accidentally swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid a watermelon plant would grow inside of him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now, if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they always wanted the same things anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together. Salt and pepper shakers, two mittens on a string, ham and eggs. They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. In spring, Chester and Wilson shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson. Wilson and Chester. That's, That's the, the way, way it was. was. Then Lily moved into the neighborhood. I'm Lily. I am the queen. I like everything. Lily had her own way of doing things. She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes so no one would know what she was saying. I, ma, you, do. She never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely has a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it, said Wilson. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their voices and said they weren't home. If Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other and hid. She's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by, popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. And Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were about to give up hope, a fierce-looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. Are you who I think you are? Chester asked the cat. Of course, the cat replied. Thank you, Lily, said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you were wearing a disguise, said Chester. And I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she had cookie cutters, and she made stars and flowers and bells. said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a nightlight, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. 
Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this instead. This is good, said Chester. Whoa, said Wilson. After that, when Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. When she called them up on the phone, they had pleasant conversations. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals. And she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards. I'm Muff Nasu. And they taught her how to double mop her shoes. Some days I just can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily. Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's, That's the, the way, way it was. was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises. And they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces. Extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics. When Chester and Wilson told Lily about how they had each swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. In spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In fall, they raked leaves together. And in summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily. Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's, That's the, the way, way it was. was. And then, Victor moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> so, Vanessa, what did you think? Uh, I think that Victor, Lily, Chester, and Wilson are going to have a great time growing watermelon plants inside of themselves. <laughs> Very cute ending. All right, let's go ahead and join each other on Seesaw, please. Go to slide two. And on slide two, remember, we're going to retell the plot of Chester's wedding. So first, you don't finish your work. You don't get to do it during break. First, we're going to start with the somebody. Our question says, who are the characters where are they at the beginning of the story? Who are the characters and where are they? Who can share out who our characters are at the beginning and tell the setting? Landon. Okay, so our sentence can say Chester and Wilson are outside. Sometimes we see them indoors, but we also know that they are outside, let's say in their neighborhood. We know that they are able to get together and play. So they probably live close together. Chester and Wilson are the who, somebody, and the setting is, where are they? Chester and Wilson are outside in their neighborhood. Right now, whatever I'm writing on Seesaw, you are writing on Seesaw. As we retell the plot, I want you thinking about somebody wanted, but 
So then somebody wanted, but so then. I can fit it inside that top box for somebody. Make sure you're answering these questions. Who are the characters? Where are they? We answered both. Who are the characters? Where are they? Next, somebody wanted. What do the characters want or need? So think about the beginning of the story. Chester and Wilson, they're outside in their neighborhood. And what did the author describe? What do they want? What do they need? Day, what are you thinking? Um, she moved into the neighborhood, they started avoiding her. Okay, so before Lily moves in, I agree, Lily moves in, but before that happens, what are the characters doing? What was their life like, Nick? Okay, the author says they're doing everything together. They're going everywhere together. And are Chester and Wilson the same or different? Different. Do they act the same or do they act different? Different. Think about the beginning with Chester and Wilson. If they're going everywhere together and doing everything together, are they similar or different? They're similar, right? It talked about how they double knotted their shoes. They both did that. They use hand signals on their bike. They both do that. What else did they both do? They did the watermelon seeds. Remember Chester did it and then Wilson said, I'll do it too. Right? They're best friends. They're doing everything together. Oscar. It even talked about when Chester's hungry, then Wilson's hungry. They do everything the same. That's the way it was. Right, Nick? Go ahead. They even have the same Christmas list? I think something is weird here. Let's type in what's going on. Think about our mountain plot starting at the beginning. Who are the characters now? What's going on? What do they want? They want, they want to be the same, right? It's just the two of them. They want to be the same. They're doing everything together. We can even add that. They do everything together. The author kept repeating that phrase, Wilson and Chester, Chester and Wilson. That's the way it was. The mom even said, I have a hard time telling these two apart. That's how similar they were. So Chester and Wilson are outside in their neighborhood. They want to be the same. They do everything together. So thinking about our plot, somebody wanted. Soon we're working up to our big problem. Somebody wanted, but uh-oh, here comes our problem. We know that the author is going to show us a problem that the characters have to deal with. Keep typing right now, putting it into your chart. Make sure you have capital letters. Make sure you have correct punctuation. 
I'm modeling how to write third grade sentences. You should have third grade sentences in your work today. Chester and Wilson are outside in their neighborhood. They want to be the same. They do everything together. Remember right now, today, you're practicing retelling the plot. If somebody has never read Chester's Way, you could retell the story. Chester and Wilson are outside in their neighborhood. They want to be the same. They do everything together. But what does Kevin Hinkies do? What's the problem in this story? Honesty, what do you know? So a new character moves into the neighborhood. So we know that Lily moves in. Lily moves in. And why is that a problem? So what? Lily moved in. What's the problem that Chester and Wilson are experiencing? They? They do not like her. Why? Why do they not like her? Because she's different from them. Oh, so Chester and Wilson are together. They want to be the same. They're doing everything together. And then here comes Lily. Is she doing everything the same as them? No. She's way different. What were some of the examples that the author gave? How? was Lily so different than Chester and Wilson? How was she not the same? Gloria? She talked backwards, just to be funny, probably. She talked backwards, what else? Nick? She was all kind of, I'm the queen, right? She was kind of just being herself, but Chester and Wilson were trying to be the same, right? What else, Day? Um, yep, Chester and Wilson had their ways. They knew what to do, but Lily was kind of just doing whatever she wanted. That was different than Chester and Wilson. What else, Landon? Um, she, um, she wore silly things, right? You saw her walking down the street with high heels on, wigs, masks. She, she dressed in silly disguises, and that was not what Chester and Wilson did. Yes, Maberly. She carried a squirt gun filled with water, but Chester carried, they called it a first aid kit. He's so worried about safety, he's carrying Band-Aids, right? That's so different. These kids are different. Yes, Day. Why did they not have a mask on? This was before COVID. So what should we say? Somebody wanted, but we're at the problem. When you retell the plot, you need to say the problem. Lily moves in and how could we finish our sentence? Lily moves in and they don't like her because she is different. Lily moves in and they, don't like her because she is different. It is important when you retell the plot of a story, it's important that you say the problem. Lily moves in and they don't like her because she is different. This is a big problem for all of them. 
Remember the author gave examples, like if Lily was walking over here, Chester and Wilson would hide over here. That's a big problem. She would even try to call them and say, do you guys want to play? And what would they do? They act like they're not even home. Can you imagine if you called a new friend and they were pretending they weren't home because they didn't want to play with you? That would really hurt our feelings. This is a big problem for Lily and it's a problem for Chester and Wilson. They don't really know what to do with this new friend who does everything different than them. They've never met someone like Lily before. They never met that other guy. They haven't Victor. met, what was his name? Victor. Victor. Yeah, just wait till Victor moves in. <laughs> yes. Never know. Maybe. All right, make it small so you can fit it into the problem section. He's just teasing. All right, we have done somebody wanted, but look at what's next. Next is so after the problem. Think about your mountain for the plot. Somebody wanted, but now we start to go down. So what happens after the problem? So it says, how do the characters solve the problem or respond? Um, Lily moves in. They don't like her because she's different. What happens then, Day? Um, bullies come in and, um, bullies so some bullies or some kids are not being nice to Chester and Wilson. Lily comes and saves them. She scares them away. Okay. So what happens after that? Do Chester and Wilson still try to do everything together? Yes. But they are um they are Lily too because she scares them away. And are they still doing everything the same, or are they learning some new things from Lily? And we see that the author says Lily learns some things from them. She starts to learn the bike signals oh, yeah. for safety. Right? She said, I'll swallow a watermelon with you she or a thief. Great. So how do the characters respond? We know that Lily was different. They, she was not liked by them. But then Lily saves them and they begin to teach each other things. Lily saves them and they begin to teach each, oh, I forgot others, teach each other things. Lily teaches them how to do wheelies on their bikes. They teach her how to double knot her shoes. They start teaching each other things and learning a different way to be. Lily learns to be more safe. And Chester and Wilson realize they don't have to worry about everything. They can try something fun. They can do something like Lily. We have done somebody wanted, but so... So We're reaching me. the end of our plot. This one, I'm so scared of It's very similar, isn't it? Like the ending sound is different. Lily saves them and they begin to teach each other things. I don't know, maybe. We didn't hear about that from the author, did we? But we heard that they do lots of things together, so maybe they're in the same class. Yeah, same teacher, same grade. They're probably in the same home now. Maybe. 
All right, finish up your so. How the characters respond to the problem. And now we have the then. Our question says, how does the story end? After Lily saves them and they begin to teach each other things, did they fix the problem that Lily moved in and they didn't like her because yes. she's different? Okay, so we see that they did fix the problem in this example. How could we describe the end, Nick? Oh, so now Lily's a part of the group. Now the three of them are doing everything together. Ashley? Well, they did fix the problem because they are with Lily now, but they might face a new problem, right? They might have to learn something new now. Honesty? Victor moves in. We see the author giving us a little tease of what might happen next. Isn't this going to be more and more kids? That's going to be more and more. Who knows how many new kids are going to move in? So, the end. Then, how does the story end? We can say Lily, comma, Chester, comma. If you're listing people's names, you use a comma. Lily, comma, Chester, comma, and Wilson. Now our friends. This is the main ending that the author gives. We now see that Lily is a part of the group. They no longer try to leave her out. She's now a part of the group and they do things together. You have done a great job retelling the plot. Look at how much detail we gave. Look at those third grade sentences. This is important. Okay. As you finish your plot, don't forget that today we're retelling plot and we are identifying the theme. The theme is the message or lesson the author, Kevin Heath, wants us to learn. What can we learn from Chester's way? Our sentence starter says, I think the author wanted me to learn. What can we learn from this? What is a theme that you think the author wanted us to learn? Landon, make sure you're listening. Um, Gloria, what are you thinking? I can't hear Gloria. People are making sounds. Go ahead. Never judge a book by its cover. Are they talking about real books? What does that phrase mean? Don't judge. Don't judge people by what you first see or think of them. So I think the author wanted me to learn don't judge people without getting to know them. Something like that. Nick, what do you think the theme could be? I think no. the author wanted me to learn knowing different people is an okay thing. Your friends don't have to do everything the same. You don't have to be just like your friend. It's okay to meet someone different and learn their ways. Any other themes that you think the author wants us to learn. Landon, did you have a theme? We've heard two really good ideas. Day? Uh, uh, before you start, um, 
as if you want to play with them and see how they are and their personality. Wow. So Day says, I think the author wanted me to learn not to just run away from people that are different. Try to get to know them. See if you have something fun to do together. I bet when Chester and Wilson first saw Lily, they thought, we'll never have fun with her. She's too, she's too different. But then when they actually got to know her, they realized this is fun. We like some of Lily's ideas. Your job now is to finish writing the theme in a sentence on the dotted line. Let's talk about your task for today. Listening ears, friends on Zoom and friends in person. Your task today is to study another book by the same author, Kevin Hinkie. This one is called <laughs> Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. And in the video about the author, he talked to us a little bit about how he wrote this book. Your job is to listen to this other story. On slide four, you're going to complete the plot. And you're going to identify what you think the theme is. So we listened to Chester's way and did it together. Today, your job is to do Lily's plastic, Lily's purple plastic purse by yourself. Tell the story of Lily's purple plastic purse and say the theme. Okay, you will notice that some of the characters are the same. We had a Lily in Chester's way. And now this book is all about Lily. Pretty cool that we get to read about the same characters today. The last thing you need to know is that page four is your work. Page five says stop. You're going to click the orange draft and save your work for tomorrow. You do not need to go past slide five. We'll do the rest tomorrow. That is your task today, slides three and slide four. Take your time like we did with capital letters and complete sentences. Are there any questions about your work today? Okay, let's go ahead and end our Zoom. Friends on Zoom, I will see you at 1034 Math.